Condition red, condition red, flat earth or doubling down. Countermeasures launched. Greetings all, I'm back again with more Stickman from Australia and his epic sextant fails. Today we have yet another example of how bad flat earth fails when it comes to their number one proof of flat earth, aka the sextant. This time I will be referencing US Navy training documentation on celestial navigation, as well as using drawings from the Institute of Navigation. The Institute, by the way, works with the Department of Defense, hint hint, US Navy, and the Department of Homeland Security, hint hint, US Coast Guard. Let me start by reading this from one of the three US Navy course manuals I have sitting before me. This unit of instruction was prepared for use in navigation study at the Officer Candidate School, the various Naval ROTC units, and within the fleet. It is considered a naval text. So saith Naval Training Command, Pensacola, Florida, and Naval Training Publications Detachment, Washington, D.C. Now let's get started and watch Stickman drown his navigator. A kind of uh, another representation, exactly what Brian's saying here. We're, we're taking an angle from the sextant. It's above the level, the sea level. So, yeah, like I said before, what the Globers want us to focus on is that straight line from the sextant to the horizon. They think that's a dip right there. It is called dip angle, but it's not a dip to a physical geometric horizon is it it's it's not a physical location when we're looking at the horizon what we're doing when we're accounting for the dip angle is accounting for the height above sea level because when we account for the height you can see that it brings the error the dip angle error down to the geometric plane and that's why they don't want to address this well first off a ton of debunkers have addressed this but not like his sheep would ever know, seeing that he safe spaces his comments in live chat. But let's set his obvious lies aside and get to the marrow of the matter. In his example, he drops the observer to the surface of the ocean and claims that this is how it's done. Wrong. According to established civilian seafarer organizations and the U.S. Navy, the correction is done without changing observer height. So Stickman, what's that calculation you say we can't use? 1.22 times the square root of the observer's height in feet. So that same calculation used to calculate dip or a sextant on a globe? Ah, interesting. Now, from the very institute that works in concert with the Navy and Coast Guard, they provide this example. The red text is mine to highlight Stickman's error. Now, what does Stickman have to say about refraction? Oh yeah, refraction. Yeah, well that absolutely kills the notion that we can use a sextant. As we can see, refraction is clearly accounted for. So what does Stickman have to say about the horizon? If you are using something like this, the sextant, you're going to need a horizon for that. Well, reading from the U.S. Navy training documents, they have this to say about your horizon. Dip of the horizon, which is the difference between visible and celestial horizon, Caused by the observer's height above the surface. Quartermaster 1 and C, Rate Training Manual, Bureau of Naval Personnel, Washington, D.C. Moving on, dip. The horizon from which the measurement is referenced depends upon the altitude, height above sea level of the observer. At higher altitudes, the visible horizon is at a greater distance, and the sextant will read in excess of altitude based on, what was that? True celestial horizon. Dip is always a minus correction and increases with the height from the from which the observation is made. U.S. Navy Navigation Compendium, Naval Training Command, Pensacola, Florida. So at no point do you ever drown your navigator. You subtract dip from the lower leg angle of the sextant at the observer's position and elevation. This establishes the celestial, sensible, true horizon that is required for the use of a sextant. You subtract refractive drop from the upper leg angle reading of the sextant at the observer's position and elevation. This establishes your true sighting angle for your celestial object, something that's not possible on a flat earth as none of the refraction correction tables or calculations work on a flat earth. Now to put this simply, you use a celestial 
sensible, true horizon, something that is always 90 degrees from zenith in all directions from the point and elevation of the observer. This is exactly what makes the use of a sextant possible on an aircraft. Now, if you flat earthers want to argue this, please send your handwritten complaints explaining how the Navy doesn't know how to use a sextant to the following address. Department of the Navy, Office of the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Michael Gilday, Chief of Naval Operations, 2000 Navy Pentagon, Washington, D.C., 20350-2000. Now be sure to send that registered mail, record and document the entire process, and post proof of you sending that letter. From this salty family to all my friends and subscribers, Go Navy! This video was brought to you by and approved by Parrot Cat. For those special times when a parrot on the shoulder just isn't enough. If you would like to keep your planet from being invaded, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, this is Loki Fish Mars.